doctor is set to be paid more than £100,000 after a judge ruled her neighbour's smart doorbell camera breached her privacy. She told court the ring camera placed her under continuous visual surveillance. Well, hundreds of thousands of households in Britain have doorbell cameras. Are they making us too nosy as neighbours? Here's Carolina Horan's car. <laughs> she could never be considered scruffy. <laughs> well, we're joined by writer and broadcaster Will Guyett, who thinks smart doorbells are for the greater good, but also by director of um, Big Brother Watch, Silky Carlo, who says we should be fearing this surveillance in society. Um, very good morning to you both. Um, good morning. Will, were you slightly alarmed by the fact that uh, this judge ruled that it broke data laws and amounted even to harassment. There's a bit of a mishmash and a mess here. These devices are being sold openly. You've already said there's hundreds and thousands of them in the UK. I don't think the rules are necessarily up to scratch. I don't think the laws are clear enough to end users. People don't know whether they need to put a sign up to say they're on CCTV. We're talking about doorbells today. Next week, I'm sure we'll probably be talking about dash cams. They're another example of people capturing footage. I think the judge's decision, whilst maybe admirable to the person stuck in this situation who felt they were being surveilled, um, is way out of step with society. There's so many positive reasons for having these devices. And I'm concerned that we're walking into a position where everybody's worried that they're being watched, whereas actually it makes me, as somebody who owns them, feel much safer. Tell us about how you use yours. Is it because you are worried about the security of your property? And, and what sort of area does it cover? Or is it just because you, you want to be safe about what's happening outside on your street, for instance? Is it a community measure? I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm often away from home. It's really useful for me as a journalist. I get deliveries all the time. I'm able to use this device. They can ring the doorbell. I can tell them where to put items and other bits and pieces. We've got various pieces of property within um, a sort of the rural area, barns and bits and pieces, so we use them around there. The other reason that's been really useful for them, and this is a real-world example of how they help people, about a year ago, somebody fell off their bike outside my house and had a very serious head wound. I was not in my property. They managed to get to my doorbell, rang my doorbell. I was got the call through to my phone. I was able to get um, one of my neighbours to come and help this person. They ended up leaving in an ambulance. That was a real world example of one of these devices actually helping. Not just concerns about security and keeping yourself safe. Sure. That's a real world example that I can cite where my device has actually helped somebody. OK, let's go to Silky on that because clearly what Will has managed to outline is, the, is how positive positive these uh, bits of tech can actually be. And when you see it and you weigh it up with the negatives, what are your concerns, Silky? Well, I think all sorts of new technologies can have positive uses, um, but we need to be careful about where the line might be crossed from protecting your own property into community surveillance. And there are now lots and lots of cases of excessive neighbour surveillance that we hear about all the time. MPs get contacted about them all the time. But can I just ask, is that a case of the people with the, with the ring doorbells not really appreciating the scope that they have and that actually they are breaching a few of those privacy laws and that they put it in, as Will has, for a means of keeping his property safe and knowing what's going on, but they, it, it oversteps the boundary and it's, and it's down to sort of the regulatory authority or, or the people that are selling them to explain that to the purchaser. Yes, that's right. I mean, I, I think there's a mixture. I mean, of course, um, excessive surveillance can be uh, might be used in the context of neighbour disputes or it might be done um, through really a lack of knowledge about exactly what is entailed when you start surveilling um, areas that are beyond your property bra uh, bounds. Um, so you are then subject to data protection law and people have the right to exercise their data rights. And that's a very good thing because, you know, imagine if, God forbid, if, if anyone is in this scenario where you have somebody who is using domestic CCTV to collect footage and now audio. I mean, this is the thing about some of the new surveillance cameras like Amazon Ring. It, 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 it records audio as well um, and it can have a very far reach. So if you're in that situation where somebody is filming and recording you and or your children all the time, it's really important that you do have those data rights. Uh, you can ask for copies of that footage. You can ask for that footage to be deleted. You can also object to, to it being recorded in the first place. 
Will, I'm getting much more concerned as I listen to um, Silky and, and her explanation of why we should be worried about them. Because actually, if it's constantly focused, for instance, on someone's front door, you could monitor, you know, someone's comings and goings and also their conversations. Now, I'm not sure I want that information in anyone else's hands as much as I want to know that I can have a delivery um, put, you know, in a neighbour's front garden to keep it safe if I'm not at home. I, can you, do you see those concerns and, and the I fact think, that, think... that this judge has made a ruling? But I don't think that this is binding. I wonder whether there should be, you know, a sort of broader ruling about data. There needs to be a bigger and wider discussion and Big Brother Watch are doing some great work in that space. Uh, my concern is you are automatically assuming the worst of everybody that's using these cameras that may have them on their door in a street and it may capture footage across the road. I can speak personally for myself and I definitely don't spend time looking at what my neighbours are doing. And in fact, my neighbours have often asked me for footage from my cameras if they're concerned if somebody's pulled up outside their house or that they're worried about a car or something that's been on the road. There is a real discussion to have about this because they're going to be one of the biggest sellers this Christmas. Millions of people are going to install them globally, but the rules aren't necessarily being flagged clearly enough. You can actually really quite easily control these devices. There's, there's software and settings in the app, which means you can turn down the sensitivity. So basically it will only go to the your boundaries, which by definition of law will be the, the method that, that you'd have to prove to somebody to say you aren't intentionally capturing other people's um, goings on. I think the, the, the bigger challenge here though is that that we, these devices give lots of people really good peace of mind. You haven't got a law enforcement, police can't come and visit and investigate every case. But if I told you that these cameras and the footage from them are being used day in, day out now in positive identifications of people breaking into houses, where police forces don't have resources, that's also surely going to push you back the other way. Because you might okay. be concerned a little bit about your personal liberty, yeah. but this is actually improving society massively. Silky, if somebody is concerned that their neighbour has one of these cameras, that it's capturing more data than just who's approaching their front door, what rights does a neighbour, for instance, have? Well, you, <clears throat> if you are using one of these cameras and you are capturing other people, the scope of the um, video recording or audio recording goes beyond your property bounds, then you are a data controller in the eyes of the law. And that means that um, your neighbour can write to you and ask for a copy of all of their data. They can ask for it to, to be deleted and they can also object to you recording it in the first place. So if it's very, uh, if it's very extensive, um, which we saw in the case that, that you referred to, and in some cases it goes into neighbours' gardens and, and all sorts, um, then, then you can object to that taking place because that could amount to harassment. I mean, it's certainly an, an invasion of, of privacy. And the problem with how advanced some of these new cameras are is that that is what they do. And the temptation is put there by the user to but in some cases, to extend the scope of their surveillance. Bear in mind as well the way that Amazon and other companies are marketing these devices. They are trading on people's fears and, and, and essentially trying to sow fear in communities as well. There are new features on these um, uh, ring doorbells, for instance, where you can tag people that you see in footage as suspicious and share that in the community. So there are some, there are some really big risks. Um, we don't want to end up in a kind of citizen surveillance environment on the back of these cameras. OK, interesting. I'm sure Amazon would say they're only trying to keep people safe. Absolutely. Um, but, uh, but it's a really interesting debate because I think, like you, Will, a lot of people have just got it because they don't want to miss a delivery and they didn't realise that actually they've become a data controller subject mm -hmm. well, to the, all sorts of, of data most, protection laws. I, I agree completely with you. And given the power of this show, why don't we just persuade Amazon right now to create some videos and some instructional content that goes out with these devices? Oh, really? If they put, make a video and put it online for people to see or include it in the app for UK users, we can step around a lot of this concern. People don't know they've become a data controller. They've got no idea what that means. They've bought this to protect their home. And the trouble is when it's 
this would have, could have, should have with some of these laws and rules. People don't really know what's right and what's wrong, what's fact or what somebody's telling them on social media. Yeah. Maybe Amazon can step in and tell people. That would make sense, wouldn't it? A very simple uh, uh, explainer with the, with this, when, they, when the purchaser buys the product would be um, a good idea. Thank you both very much for joining us this morning. Lots of you getting in touch. The vast majority, very positive. Alan says, I have CCTV and these smart cameras. My neighbours rely on the footage when it comes to crime on my road. Personally, I think it's a good idea, especially when you're making other feel safe, which is what was, Will was saying. Yeah.